lately, as I've uh, run into Jewish and Muslim women on the street with their heads covered, I've realized that I'm, uh, I'm hiding part of my identity. I'm sitting in this coffee bean and there are two people to my left and one to my right. All of them are clearly identifiable as religious Jews. The woman, she has a, a black scarf, a tichel, on her head. All her hair is covered. There's just, you know, a little hairline, a few strands peeking out. Her skirt goes all the way down. This fellow, black yarmulke, which I bet on the Sabbath hides under a black hat. Big red beard and large knitted kippah in colors to match. To look at me, you'd never suspect that I've selected this coffee bean today because I'm going to be sitting here for a while. And if I want to eat something, coffee bean is the only cafe kosher choice. You wouldn't suspect that Friday finds me moving from room to room, turning lights off and on, depending on how many people we're having for dinner and where and when we're expecting to read in the next 25 hours. Turning off all the lights in the fridge so that God forbid we don't find Shabbos lunch held hostage because we can't turn the light on when we open the fridge door. Now, I realize that that might seem a little extreme to you. But for me, there's something about living in that time and space after the lights are set and the candles are kindled. It's sacred. It's set apart. There's communion and community unlike anything I get during the week. It would be so great if I could find some women who feel the same sorts of things from their tradition. You maybe? How about you? Wait, wait maybe that's her. Oh, no. I, I, can see, I can see from her husband, they're both Jewish. I think here in Pico Robertson, uh, I'm probably not going to do so well. I wonder if there's a hijabi coffee bean in some other neighborhood. <laughs> well, I better get back to the profile. Write about you or your ideal partner in 250 characters or more. You, like me, are grounded in your tradition. Your religion comprises an important part of your identity, but sometimes it drives you crazy and occasionally makes you want to scream. Some of us, Jews and Muslims, are recovering our tradition. Some of us are recovering from our tradition. Which one are you? I I'm mostly simultaneously doing both. I love diving deep down into the text of Torah. I love the ideas, the language, the stories. But when I surface, sometimes I can't stand what's been uncovered. For instance, the woman whose husband is visited by a spirit of jealousy this woman is wrong through an incredible ritual. She stood in the temple, her hair is put out to go wild, and then they test her with poison. If she survives, it's proof she's innocent. Now, it, there's never been any proof that this ritual actually happened. 
But for generation after generation of commentary, the rabbis imagine all of the incredible torture she might have endured. This fear of women that's embedded in my tradition really burns me up. I'm wondering if there's anything in your tradition that heats you up like that, makes you want to explore. Explode, maybe? Uh, tonight, I'm going to this storytelling event about standing up for the other. And it's really wonderful to think about the idea of possibility of my standing up for somebody or somebody else standing up for me. But I'm realizing that right now, I really just want someone to stand beside me, with me. So, if any of my questions about covering or uncovering have made you curious in any direction, why don't you join me? Maybe you're Muslim. Maybe you're Jewish. Maybe you're an actress. Maybe you're a filmmaker. You dance or you don't. You cover or you won't. Maybe you, you just have a story and you're up for adventure. Join me at my table after the performance. Share your story. Who knows? Maybe we'll want to make a date just to talk.